Well, if you're sick of me clearing my throat, now at least I have a diagnosis. I also washed my hair yesterday, so I don't know why I'm choosing hat. Um, just wondering if you're still reading Chainsaw Man. Yes. It is hard to get a hold of Chainsaw Man, though. I will say. I ordered it from Bright Stuff Anime, which is a, like, manga wholesaler. And they will let you buy something if it's not in stock. So, I bought Chainsaw Man, like, one through... What are we at? Like, seven? I bought a bunch of them. And they are trickling in. So yesterday, I went to my one-year checkup appointment for my septum. Last year, I had a septoplasty. I had a severely deviated septum. And a lot of my symptoms were, you know, they made life difficult. My symptoms were, like, constant runny nose. So, like, period, that's awful. Um, and I didn't realize that I had basically zero function of my nose. I had a collapsed nasal cavity. I, I don't know how I was even smelling or tasting. I have no idea. My nose didn't work. I had a septoplasty and it was a pretty severe one. I'm a little bit repeating myself, but when I went for help, the first surgeon actually had to recommend me to a specialist because my septum was so severely deviated like a reconstructive specialist had to do my nose um and sometimes him and i butt heads um so for my year appointment which would have been in april my appointment has been rescheduled two times and in that time I am losing function of my nose again, my nose is running again, difficulty tasting, I'm clearing my throat a lot, so, um, you know, probably post-nasal drip a little bit there. So I finally got an appointment with my doctor yesterday, and it's funny because the, the like, hospital has taken away the elevator buttons, <laughs> so I, I thought it was going to be late for my appointment, but I was all good. For my, like, intake, I said difficulty breathing, runny nose, needing to blow my nose before I eat, all of this stuff. I said while I exercise, I'm breathing through my mouth. And luckily, for my last appointment that I had in November, I complained about the exact same things. A lot of people want to tell me it's allergies. And I know your allergies can change, like, year to year. You can wake up one day just being allergic to cats. I think. So allergies can happen and come out of nowhere if you never had them. And my whole thing is I don't have allergies. I'm not bragging. I just don't have them. There could be a whole fucking windstorm of pollen and I'll just be like, ew. But I'm not like affected by it. I rub my face into my cats all up in that shit and I pick the cat hairs out of my eyes and stuff but I don't have allergies although I have medicated myself for allergies in my quest to figure out what the fuck is going on so in November my little my chart I had complained about the same things and I had forgotten so when I complained about them again today the person doing my intake was like oh yeah that seems consistent with the last time and I was like last time he told me it was allergies, and that I looked great, and then he left. It was like 60 seconds on the clock. Well, last time I was there, the doctor didn't use a scope. It's like a, um, it's like a long, <laughs> have you ever seen the anime Parasite? It's like a long flashlight tube thing. You know the, you know the fucking fish? with the light on the head from the Mariana Trench. It's like that. It's like a long, bendy, it's like this long. And they actually keep it in a locked case because it's like sterilized, autoclaved or something. Mm. So I was like, last time I was here, the doctor didn't use a scope and I think I want a recommendation for an MRI. 
And she was like, I don't think you need an MRI. And I was like, then, then I need, I need, like, so I was like, I want the scope. And I know when I'm going to have the scope because you have to sign a consent form. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You have to sign a consent form to be scoped. So I was like, please fucking scope me today or give me an appointment for an MRI. Because something's not working. Like, it's not working. So I filled out the scope stuff. I'm like, can you scope me every time? Just wash it off. There's nobody washing it off. Just, please, can I scope? And it's frustrating because in my intake, it says that I'm on birth control. And every single time they say, are you still on, uh, I forget what my birth control is called. You know, they're like, are you still on blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. So every time I go, they're like, are, um, any changes to your medication? Are you still, yeah. And I'm like, I was on that birth control for like two months, lady. It's time to move on. Are we talking about the doctors? So yeah, yesterday I had my year visit to my surgeon. And in my intake, my birth control, my birth control was still listed. And every time I tell them to take it out, not that, like, I don't know, like, that it's just not, it's not up to date, and it hasn't been up to date for, like, two fucking years. So, during my intake, she was even like, any change to your medication? And I was like, does it still list that I'm on birth control? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, last time I told them to take it out. And the time before that, I told them to take it out. And before that, I told them to take it out. I was like, I've been on birth control less times, less months than I have times I've told them to take it out of my chart. Um, and the intake person said, okay, I'll make a note. Um, only one of the nurse practitioners has access to editing the charts, and sometimes she has to edit like 30 a day and she'll miss one. And I was like, well, she's missed mine like 10 times. And she said, okay, I'll pull in a favor. I was like, no fucking favor. No favor. Like, get rid of it. It's not right. It's not up to date. But you asked me, is my marital status updated? And I'm like, bitch. One is m much more likely than the other that I would go on and off birth control. Um, so I was like... Yeah, no more sn small talk after this. I want the room to be blaringly silent. I want it to be so uncomfortable in here and toxic. I want to hear somebody three doors down. No more small talk. Treat me right. When the doctor came in, he had only put aside like five minutes for me. And that's not what I was doing today. I was getting at least 10 minutes, sir. Um, so he went into my chart. And, um, I was like, I can't breathe. I was like, I can't breathe. Um, he asked, like, how I like how my nose looks. I was like, yeah, I think it looks good. Like, I have... Like, a couple months ago, I felt like I looked like I had, like, a plastic surgery nose. No diss, I'm just trying to describe it. Um, I think I looked like, like, a very sculpted, like, European, just... Um, so I think now I look more like a natural nose. So I said that to him, and he said, and we can always narrow your nose. I was like, okay. Um, then I told him about the breathing and um, that my nose is running all the time, that I have to blow my nose all, like, you guys know what I told him. So he had me sit on like the little doctor's chair and he got the scope. He put the scope in my ears, um, in my throat, in my left and it couldn't 
even fit in my right. He couldn't even put the scope in my right nostril. In that moment, when I tell you, life is so unfortunate that these are my victories, I was like, I tried to tell you this in November and you didn't do the scope. You just told me I looked great. Um, so he said, do you use Afrin? which is a nasal spray. And I said, last time I was here, you told me to use Afrin, but there are warning labels on the Afrin to not use it all the time. You can use it like once in a while, but you can't use it all the time. So I don't, I don't. And he said, do you use any other nasal spray? And I use like a saline solution that is like a non-medical saline solution because whatever is an Afrin, you can become addicted to. And I don't think you become addicted to it where you have like, um, like a dependency. I think your nose just won't work without it eventually. So you're not supposed to use Afrin a lot. So he said, hold on, I have to talk to another patient. It should only be like five minutes and then I'll come back. So he came back in with literally a box from like CVS, like a box of store, of like, um, not store brand, but what is it? Like you have the name brand and then you have the like non name brand medicine, generic. So he came in with a like generic box of Afrin and gave it to me. He said, try that. And then he left. So I like open the box, like take off the little safety seal, like, and spray it in my nose. And I'm just fucking sitting there. And I know it's from CVS because I have the same box of it in my house, feet away. So I'm in there and I'm like, <sighs> um, and the like intake nurse comes in and tells me she's going to take my before and after picture and I'm kind of like you take it every time I'm here and it feels like you're parading as like I'm getting an experience and um why do we need so many fucking pictures so she's like I'm just setting you up dear for your picture so the doctor comes back in and um he's on his phone like updating something he's like really just like standing there and I was like and then I was like what do I do with this Afrin I like tried to put it like on the little like tray thing to like to just be like S do you want do you want this back is this from your purse what um and so he came in and he was like do you have a picture of your nose from before the surgery and I was like, yeah, like, yeah, I take a picture of myself every day. So I was like, probably, yeah. Um, and I said, but I think you guys have all the pictures of me. And he said, look on your phone, see if you have one. And then he was like on his computer. And then he, I was like looking, I was like, I don't really what is he looking for? Why does that matter? Like, I don't understand. So he turned around from the computer and he was like, um, the, the issue is your turbinates. They're in, they're in like inflamed, enlarged. And I was like, um, well, I got your surgical notes after surgery and it said that you performed a turbinate reduction. Sorry, Doc, I have 4,000 pictures for Harry Styles, no pic of my face. 
So I was like, oh, well, I got your surgical notes after surgery, and it said that you reduced my turbinates. Or charged my insurance for that. I don't know. So he said, yeah, there was an initial reduction, but I was not very aggressive with the reduction. He said, we mostly focused on your septum, reconstructing your septum and making it straight. And he said that I have, that my septum is healed and looks good, which is great news, you know, since I'm in a combat sport. <laughs> So I was like, okay, word. I do recognize that my case was really severe. So I understand, like, I don't know, not being initially aggressive with my turbinate reduction. But that seems to be why my nose is running all the time. Now let's look up what the fuck a turbinate is. Because I've been spelling it all sorts of crazy ways as well. So these, see, like, I'll look up turbinate and it'll show it off to the side of the nose. And then sometimes it'll show it, this one looks like a good. See, like, I'm just confused about where it is. Like, is it on, is this, like, behind the scenes? Is this underneath? Because up here is just, like, cartilage, right? If Adobe Premiere automatically updates, this this stream is going to crash. Yeah, see, I see all these different, like, graphs, and I have no idea where the turbinate is. I'm like, is it in my skull? Where is it? Um, this might be helpful, I guess. So if this is your septum, I'm going to get demonetized. If this is your septum... Oh my god, Adobe did automatically update. Shame! Are we crashing? Are we lagging? So if this is your septum, I think we understand where our septum is. It's like the the straight line of our nose and the like little little dongle there. So I think the turbinate is like I don't know. This seems like the nose hole where the boogers and stuff live. And I guess this is just a wad there. Just like a wad. And the wad, I guess, is big. Can become big. You can tell I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about because I wasn't educated on it. Okay, I think this helps. And this chap has a deviated septum and a very furrowed brow. This issue plagues them. See, I don't know where the fuck this turbinate is if it's like behind your nose or in the side there but anyway you can see it's just like this giant fucking wad and because mine is inflamed look how little air can travel through just the nasal cavity I don't know or it's like rock solid or something because this one seems to take up a lot of room as well I don't know. Should I know? Because I don't. Flappy flaps on the inside. So I can look at this all day, but I don't know. Is this John Mulaney? <laughs> I just, I don't quite, I don't quite understand. This is kind of helpful. Okay. Enlarge turbinate. So I guess when you look up your nose, you would see just like a big wad up there. And this is somebody breathing. And I guess when that turbinate is all swollen, the wad is just enlarged and it makes this passageway difficult. Okay, I think we understand now. This is the best, the best image here. Turbinate gets big and it's a big old wad right there. The wad interferes with the passageway and when you're trying to breathe, that witch, I'm so sorry, this is, sorry your nose turbinates are aggressive. Those must be the things that vibrate if you blow your nose hard. Oh, why didn't he say that? I would have understood that. 
Instead, I needed this wiki how on removing your own turbinates here. Your, your turbines. So I got my before and after pictures taken. Um, my doctor aggressively suggested I let him put the pictures on his Instagram. And he told me I had to fill out new paperwork. And I said, oh, I filmed it, I filled it out in November. I said no to Instagram. And he said, no, no, we're doing something different with our Instagram. So he showed me the Instagram and I was like... And then he got out the consent form and he said, you'll check here. And he literally checked it. And he said, and you'll check here. And he literally checked it for me. And then left. So if I end up on his Instagram, I don't know what my legal options are, but I'm going to freak the fuck out. I don't think it'll do him any favors either because I've been complaining about him for the last year. It would probably be the worst thing he could do. He told me, you know, yeah, he wasn't initially aggressive with the turbinates during my initial surgery. Um, he said, so he put me on six weeks of a nasal steroid. It's called Flonase, which I didn't realize was a prescription product. I thought you could buy Flonase or something. Um, and the reason I don't fuck around with all of these products is because you can become addicted to them. So all these different nasal sprays I don't fuck with. And I also don't use a neti pot. And I found out after my surgery that a neti pot wouldn't have done anything for my condition anyway. So I don't use all of these little products. So he put me on six weeks of Flonase, which is a steroid. And he said, if after six weeks, there's no reduction in the inflammation of my turbinates, then my next option is surgery. He said that the surgery, cause I, I thought that the surgery might be considered like a revision or something. Um, and he said that insurance would cover it 100%. Now, when I had my septoplasty, my insurance did cover it, but didn't cover the anesthesiologist who was out of network. And it cost me a fuck ton of money. Um, it cost me all of my Biden bucks. <laughs> I would, I, so I think we talked about it in stream that out of network anesthesiologists popping up, I believe became illegal. I think we talked about this on stream. Um, but we may have been talking about a different state, or who knows, Europe? I only use Sterimar, which is a sea salt water spray. Yeah, I use, in the States, it's called, like, it's like a saline solution spray as well. I'll use that, and it's, I like that, because you spray it up your nose, like, wait 10 seconds, and then blow it out. So I feel like it cleans you up, and then you get rid of it. Like, swallowing and stuff, the Afrin, I don't like that. There's a No Surprise Act now. They have to inform you of the costs. Okay, they did, they did do that with me, though, so I'm not sure. Flonase is both prescription and over-the-counter in different quantities or something. My father-in-law is addicted to Flonase, but as long as you use it moderately, as directed, you should be fine. Um, so he told, he wrote me a prescription for Flonase, and he said in, you know, in six weeks, if I don't see anything, I come back. Now, there's a lot to think about with surgery. It seems like someone else in the comments said earlier that this may be a less aggressive surgery. I don't know. I don't know where the turbinates are. When we look at these pictures... I don't know if they're here on top of my nose or underneath my nose, like under in my skull. Like, does he have to take the nose off or is it in the nostrils? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand where they are. Where are they? Are they in here? 
Like, in your, like, tear duct area? Are they in, like, am I pointing to them? Or are they in here? I don't understand where they are. Take the nose off. Yeah, does he have to... Because one thing I noticed after my surgery was I only had a scar here. You might kind of be able to see it. But I see a lot of surgeries where the scar is here along the bottom of the nose. And I guess they just like peel it up. If I get surgery on my nose, one, how much is the fucking anesthesiologist? Like, is this a revision? Is it his fault? Like, does it get covered? Because all of my symptoms that I initially came to this doctor with are enlarged turbinate. So him not being initially aggressive, is this a revision? Does it fall on him? Is it 100% covered in my insurance? Some quality of life stuff isn't covered under American insurance. Um, a popular one is breast reduction. So that's a quality of life thing that often isn't covered by insurance unless you can prove this, 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 and this. I was thinking that turbinate reduction might be something along a similar thing. Like, it bothers me, but I can take medicine for it. Um, additionally, if my turbinates are just inflamed or something right now, they also were in November, so I don't know. I actually had, like, a, a little- I had- this is gross, I don't know, we're all friends here. I had, like, a little bump on my head, and I had it for a long time, and I was able to get it covered under insurance. One, I had a really aggressive doctor, I'm really happy for her, but it was able to be covered by insurance because my headphones went over it, and she argued that I had a hard time focusing at work. Meanwhile, we had to remove the lump and biopsy it. It could have been cancer. <laughs> There's a video of a version of the surgery, graphic image warning, and it doesn't look like the nose comes off. Cool. They just peel it up. Like, <laughs> roll it up. She argued that my headphones <laughs> at work. Uh, I, I don't know. The doctors who give a shit too, like, they know how to do it. They know how, they know the right things to say. So I don't know the recovery from this surgery if it's less invasive. Having my septoplasty done was crazy. It rocked my world. Like half a dozen people messaged me and they were like, I had this surgery done and your recovery looks way crazier. All this, I was just out of it. I was so uncomfortable. Um, I couldn't work for like a month. Like it, it, it sucked. So anyway, I don't necessarily know what the healing or anything of the turbinate reduction surgery would be, but I figured it's invasive. Your flaps, my lord. I would have to quit jujitsu right off the top of my head. I'd have to quit jujitsu. I'd have to take two weeks off of work minimum. I started a summer class. I started it today, actually. Today was my first, my first, um class in my summer class started then today so i don't what do i quit that <laughs> i so i went to my pharmacy and they have like a midday siesta and i missed it by one minute so i had to sit there uh for a half hour and i just bought a bunch of yogurt so i posted about it online and a few people were messaging me and they were like um turbinates can grow back so if you have them reduced or removed they can just grow back and i was like oh word somebody messaged me and said if they take away my tur turbinates i might suffer from empty nose syndrome so let's look that up because i said what came right up Radical restriction of the turbinates may lead to severe functional disturbances developing a secondary autotroph 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 sounds like atrophy atrophic re nilis. The empty nose syndrome is a specific entity within the secondary atrophic rhinitis where 
Intran intranasal changes the airflow, results in disturbed. Come on, man. Can I have some, can I have some? Tell me, tell the common folk. Obviously we don't know what the fuck's going on. What are the symptoms of empty nose syndrome? The symptoms of empty nose syndrome include difficulty breathing, reoccurring sensation of drowning, breathlessness or a need to gasp for air, nasal dryness and crusting, headaches, nosebleed, low airflow, dizziness, reduce of sense of smell, lack of mucus, a thick post-nasal drip, heart palpitations, nasal swelling, tiredness, daytime sleepiness, <laughs> anxiety and depression. What causes empty nose syndrome? Doctors aren't completely sure why empty nose syndrome affects some people who've had septoplasty and turbinate reduction, but not others. New research suggests that empty nose syndrome is triggered by the body sensing different levels of pressure and perhaps also temperature in each of the nasal cavities. This makes it difficult for you to feel when you're breathing. Oh, the nose pressure and temperature receptors may be located on the turbinates. Surgery is believed to disrupt the receptors and cause some people to lose their ability to sense nasal breathing. Okay, I've heard enough. Reducing your turbinate runs the risk of empty nose syndrome. And I guess empty nose syndrome, if they... So it's my right side that has the enlarged turbinates. So if he reduces the size of the turbinates in my right side it may create even more airflow which sends my brain signals that each nostril is pulling different amounts of air dang head empty now nose empty too okay honey truffle empty nose syndrome can make people feel like they are constantly suffocating when they try to breathe through their nose holy shit the deck is stacked I don't know what to choose. If I got empty nose syndrome, and I will, um, wouldn't that just be a th wouldn't that just be the worst? After talking to some of you guys and looking up empty nose syndrome and stuff, um, and then also losing any time from my schedule or getting surgery again like it doesn't seem like what I want if you can get this surgery and your turbinates grow back then I'm just getting the same surgery every couple of years um and if it puts me at higher risk for empty nose syndrome that feels like you're drowning like having a runny nose and my partner dealing with it like doesn't seem so bad we got my before, we did my before and after pictures, and my surgeon came in, and he said, did we give you a chin implant? And I said, no. He said, oh, you know, when you can breathe better, sometimes you, uh, it changes, it changes your face. I didn't post the before and after pictures on my Instagram, because I, like, really look like my dad in this pic that's like exactly what my dad looks like do i look like a girl does he look like a girl i mean i've also like i've also lost i've also lost weight like a little bit i think little extra chin did we did we give you a chin implant i was like what the fuck 